Hi guys, I'm Nimesh and welcome to Refer UX. Today I'm going to show you the installation and configuration of POFTPD server in Scratch mode. POFTPD is a free FTP server with a strong focus on software security. It can be complied and run on a variety of Unix-like computer operating systems including Linux, OpenBSD, FreeBSD and many others. For the installation, of course, you can use yum tool to install this very easily and there are pl plenty of such video tutorials available in the internet. However, it's rare to find a video tutorial with scratch method as it gives an insight and more control on your installation. Plus, it's a bit difficult. So today I'm going to show you how to do it in scratch method. To do this, you need to have sent OS 7 installed in your machine or in your virtual machine in a server mode with GUI configuration. All right, let's begin. First, we need to download the POFTPD table from its website. The relevant link is mentioned below in the description. So we'll open Firefox in the CentOS, then we will go to the link which is mentioned in the download below description. Seems take some time my internet connectivity bit is bit slow. All right, it won't take much time. All right, we are in the index page of the POFTPD downloads, and you can go to the uh, relevant path here like this. Okay. Right, PFTPD, then the old versions. Cool. Here, make sure, please make sure that to download the version 42, as the later versions has some issues with the configuration file. If you want, you can try, but the version that we are using here is version 42. You can click it to download the uh, table there. It's a very small file with few kilobytes. Yes, it's almost downloaded. Yeah. Cool. Now we can close the browser and we can open a terminal and we can change our mode to super user mode as it gives us easy access to rest of the installation processes. Can you the password there? Then we can change our folder or rather directory to the downloads folder. There you can use the ls command to list down all the files there in the downloads directory. Then we can copy the downloaded pure FTPD table to the user slash local slash bin directory. Cool. There you can use again ls command to list the available files inside the bin directory. Then you, we can extract this table. There you can use tar xvzf command. Well, xvzf means uh, to x for the extract, uh, v to list out all the extract files, z for the uncompressed the files there, the f means the file name, which is the pofdpd42. Right now we have extracted successfully, then we can change our folder to directory to the PFTP folder inside. 
There you can list again use the ls command to list all the files resides inside the POFTPD direct extractor directory. Now let's configure the POFTPD file with its default parameters. You can use this command right now. I'm typing I am entering in order to configure with the default parameters. Sometimes you may encounter this kind of error. That's because due to unavailability of C compiler. So now let's install the C compiler using this command, yum command, uh, yum minus y install gcc c++ minus c++. Okay. There again, sometimes you may encounter this kind of error that is uh, due to uh, uh, running of uh, another process which, uh, which uh, blocks the installation. So you can kill the process using this particular command. Cool. Now again, you can try installing the C compiler and you can see it's installing uh, C compiler. Uh, based on your uh, connectivity, it takes some time. Uh, let me uh, check the net connectivity. It's um, it seems a bit low compared to other scenarios. Okay. Uh, let me post the video till uh, I download this thing. Okay. Now again, we are back. Okay. We have downloaded the video. Uh, C compiler and installing and updates relevant uh, repositories. Okay. Yeah, now it's a bit fast. Okay, cool. Now the C compiler has successfully installed. Now you can try the previous command uh, to configure the POFTPD file with its default parameters. Now you can see it's running perfectly. Uh, it seems now everything's okay. Actually, the configuration script is responsible for getting ready to build the software on a specific system. It makes sure that all the dependencies for the rest of the build and install processes are available and finds out whatever it needs to know to use those dependencies. That's why uh, in scratch method, we first configure the script given uh, before, uh, when installing. All right, if you get this message, which means you have successfully installed the configured the POFTPD, then script, then we can use the make command uh, to make, make command here to build the POFTPD. Once uh, the configuration has done its job, we can invoke make command to build the software. This runs a series of tasks defined in the make file to build the finished program from its tor spot. Finally, we can use the we can install the POFTPD using make install command. Here, the software built and ready to run. The files can be copied to their final destinations. The make install command will copy the build program and its library documentation to correct locations. Cool. If everything is done, we can now change our directory configuration file directory. 
There we can copy the bftpd.com file to the slash etc directory. The slash etc is where our configuration files reside. Now, let's change the access permission of the pureconfig.pl file to 755. As you know, 755 means where owner of the file can perform all read, write, and execution, where others can perform only read and execute. .pl means that this pureconfig script is written in Perl language. Now, let's copy the pureconfig.pl pl to slash sbin directory. The scripts residing inside the slash sbin directory can run by only super user privileges. All right, now let's change the access criteria of pftpd. To do that, we have to move to configuration file. Let's open it using gedit text editor. There, we can move to here to no anonymous and we can change it to Yes, and no to yes, uh, uh, and save it. Which this means that no one allowed, no, uh, it will not allow anonymous logins. Which means you have to enter your credentials like username, passwords, to enter the PFPD file server. All right, everything is set. Now we can run the PFTPD. Now let's move our directory to PFTPD, and we will run this particular command in order to run the PFTPD. Well, if you get this kind of a message, which means you have successfully installed the PFTPD and configured and installed the PFTPD, to do further, uh, to check the network connectivity, we can run this particular command where it shows that Proya Protocol 21 PFTPD is running. Using the netcat command, we can check it. Right. If everything is set, we can uh, try, we can access uh, PFTPD using our browser. Before that, we need to get the IP address of the Linux server, uh, IF command, IF, IF, IF config command, you can get it as I showed just before. Then you can open a web browser in the host machine and there and the address bar, you can type this particular command in order to access the FTPT server. Uh, in my machine is called the instrument, instrument machine as well as the IP address uh, given 9268-1776-1243 actually. Uh, as you can see, that FTPT double, uh, sla uh, double slash is the way that we can access a file server. Cool. Uh, now we can enter and you can see kind of a delay or lagging, uh, which means that not showing any, any credential asking box or something like that. This is mainly due to firewall issue, which means that a Linux box is not allowing uh, to access to the uh, file FTP or HTTP, uh, from outside. To do that, we have to enter this particular configuration to the firewall CMD, uh, which simply gives or rather allows FTP server in a permanent basis, as well as we are reloading the firewall in order to make this command activated. Plus, uh, we give another access via the secure linux boolean method uh, we have full access to the ftpd now when you run this thing uh, it takes some um, a few seconds to uh, reload the firewall cmd uh, to activate the given commands okay Minus P is the persistent, which means in every preload, this will act as it is, so that you don't want to give it again and again. Okay. Now it takes a few seconds. Okay. Cool. I think we everything is set. Yes, everything is set. Now, 
we can open the web browser okay before that uh, let's run the uh, pftp server again and you can see it's everything is okay now we'll run it uh, using the uh, we'll try access using the host uh, browser and you can see uh, the authentication requirement is asking which is a credential that's why we said the no anonymous uh, uh, to uh, no to yes okay once you give the correct credentials you can access the ftp server like this if you can access like this which means you have successfully installed configured uh, dpftpt which is default configuration you can test it using wildzilla as well another ftp software client and you can see you can go uh, in the site manager you can create a new uh, new site and give the relevant credentials that is ip and the username and password and um, there uh, I have deleted uh, my existing uh, logins and I'll create a new site. Okay, I'll name it as PO FTPT uh, part one because this is a part one video. And you can give it my IP. One, four, three. And uh, to check, me double check it. Okay, I just got, yes, it is. It is like that. And of course, I had to give my. Um, I'll make it as a user DDL if it's available, this option. And of course, uh, username I'll be giving and uh, if I try ask to connect it, I can make it normal, okay, login type normal and the password also I had to give there. Then I'll connect it. And uh, of course, yes, uh, you make it okay. Uh, then you make password. Okay, I'm asking you my password again. Cool. You can see that I'll get a successful login via the F FileZilla. Okay, if we can get this kind of a output, which means that you have successfully logged to the FTP server, FTP server uh, using the FileZilla as well. Well, guys, this is the part one of three videos on installation and configuration of POFTPD file server using Scratch method. There are two more videos to come, one for the enabling virtual users and the other for enabling transport layer security based login. We'll check them out in future videos. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you will learn something, please like and share the video. To get alerts on future videos, please subscribe to the channel now. Good luck.